Cool. Okay. Hey, everybody. Great to meet you all. Uh, my name's Phil. Uh, I founded GG Insurance Services about seven or eight years ago. Uh, I've been doing insurance for 20 years, but I've been playing games since I was three or four years old. Uh, hugely passionate about the space. Uh, and I love being able to sort of uh, carve out this niche where we can be supporting games and companies that I love with insurance solutions, protecting them against risk and screwing up or not screwing up and making sure that someone's paying for it. So that, that's what we're here to do. And uh, yeah, if we're getting down into what is, what is scary, it's generally a fear of the unknown. Yeah. And I think a lot of people look at insurance and they're like, I don't understand this, therefore it's scary. So what I'm hoping to do is demystify that and unspookify it and be like, hey, actually it's not that complicated. Um, with a little bit of knowledge, when you're being asked to either get insurance or you're exploring it, it you know, you, you kind of feel like a little bit more comfortable about what is this. So something called professional liability insurance, which sounds scary, right? That sounds you know, what is that? But um, oh, yeah. the idea with this is professional liability is effectively you're, you're a business. You, you know, you're making video games or publishing games or doing something in the industry. Um, and as a business, you're going to have business to business risks, disputes. As soon as there's some sort of contract that's in play, whether that's, you know, your first publishing agreement or your licensing IP or your outsourcing work for hire or you're doing work for hire for somebody else. You're basically working with another business there's a risk there that something could go wrong yeah um but generally uh if something does go wrong then you know you, you work through it amicably because right, we're all friends in this industry most yeah. of the time uh and we hope that it all gets sorted out but sometimes it doesn't sometimes things just genuinely get to a point where one party is saying well generally they're not going to apologize they're not going to say oh, i'm really sorry but we're suing you they will just sue you um and it, it this could come from from any sort of um Angle. It could be it could be a publisher that you're working with where you've not delivered on certain you know promises you've made. There okay. could be you know maybe uh, you know, negligence or failure. For, if you're doing work for hire, for example, and you said right, we're going to have this project done by a certain date to a certain quality, and yeah, maybe you've just had a you know, busy couple of months, we weren't able to do it on time, uh, but it was part of a you know wider bigger project, bigger project yeah. yeah and they're like this is now held up for development for let's say gta 6 you know and your piece of that puzzle has caused a big knock-on effect to the you know the release schedule for, for for gta 6 so they're now saying well look okay even though we only paid you 20k to do this job this has now caused us you know a million extra. dollars worth of extra work we've had to fix the problem we're pretty upset with you guys um so we we want that we want that million dollars back yeah now we want you to compensate us because it's yeah. not our fault you're behind like you, it's not our fault we had to spend that you made us yeah spend that. yeah okay. and there's, there's tons of other like different scenarios i'm going to go in, into every single possible iteration of that but that's one fairly you know common thing now if you were going to be doing work with you know with a studio like that with, with a publisher like that they're probably going to expect you to have this insurance Okay. Because of situations like that, because they're going to be well aware that, okay, if we're outsourcing some of this work, um, or if it's a publisher investing in a developer or a license holder licensing out their IP to you, uh, if there's something that you could do that could cause them a problem, like if it was, if you're licensing in um, you know, a famous character from a, from a movie or, or, or music yeah. or something, you could cause damage to that brand that would then be mm. fixed. So, yes. um, they want to reserve the right to sue you for that. And if you were a smaller indie studio, you might not have a million dollars lying around to no. pay them off, <laughs> right? Um, that's where the insurance comes in. So okay. we'd often see in a contract a requirement for certain types of insurance. In particular, you might see errors and omissions insurance. Yes, It's sometimes called professional liability professional indemnity it goes by a few different names okay you might okay see this in so it's got different company. names but they're yeah, basically the names, same thing pretty much the same thing yeah yeah there is some nuance to this um and I'll, I'll cover this a bit later in top tips but also different insurance policies from different insurers mm -hmm. are not necessarily the same you've got to look at the underlying policy wording this is where it gets super boring and super long because you've got <laughs> a, like, an 80 page long document but but professional indemnity from insurer one is not going to be the same as professional indemnity from insurer two. The circumstances mm. in which they pay claims 
you know, can be quite nuanced. Um, so you, you're going to want to, um, yeah, what, <laughs> I'm making it sound scary again. I'll make it sound like- I was going to say, this is still scary. <laughs> is, uh, you're but, telling me 80 pages. <laughs> To figure no, out. No, <laughs> yeah, and this and this is not this is not meant to be a sales pitch. This is genuinely to, to help you guys. But uh, this is where using people in the industry to understand this and do it day to day can kind of help that, you. That speak the legalese and can tell you. Yeah, yeah. So if you have friendly lawyers that you're working with already, they should help you with this. Insurance brokers uh, that know what they're doing should be able to help you with this. Um, making sure that you're not coming to the table with with some insurance policy that you've got from some back alley insurance broker that's really cheap that you think covers you that doesn't uh you're just gonna have a bad time uh, some guy though, in a trench coat in a back alley <laughs> yeah, one of yeah, my exactly that yeah that's yeah that's that's how yeah <laughs> that's how a lot of insurance brokers are they're like uh hey, yeah yeah oh you your current broker you, you charge, they're charging you how much how much oh i can get you that cheaper um, and it's very enticing because insurance is, is expensive. It's expensive. Yep. Because, it is expensive, but it's more expensive mm, if you need it and you don't have it. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is something that a lot of people maybe don't appreciate is the reason it's expensive is because the insurers pay the claims. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they aren't just trying to steal money from you. It's not a big scam. I hate, you know, a lot of people say, oh, insurance is just a scam. It's just insurance companies trying to get, you know, make as much money as they can. I promise you it is not. Um, a lot of these things, uh, uh, you know, we look at, so a true example, like our portfolio, for example, mm -hmm. we have discussions with insurers every year. We look at how the, the overall, what we call the book of business is performing. We look at how many claims have we had, how much premium has come in. And of course, insurers do want to make profit. But yeah. I guarantee it's not as much as people think it is. A lot yeah. of it goes out on claims, and then that is reflected in the prices. So Amazing. we had a publisher that approached us. So we weren't doing the insurance with the publisher, but they came to us and said, hey, there's this video game that we really, really like. Um, we think it's going to be super cool. We want to publish it, but we're worried that there's going to be a copyright claim on this one. So copyright is often included in professional insurance as well. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, professional liability often includes um, copyright and trademark infringement as well as some cyber liability. Uh, okay. the, and this goes back to my point as you need to check the wording and see what's included. So they're not always the same. Some of them include the stuff, some of them don't. You want to yeah. be looking for ones that do include some IP insurance. Okay. Um, patents and trade secret are also types of IP not generally included in this package you have to buy them separately oh really yes and um, that's super relevant especially right now because there's a very very well publicized uh, lawsuit going on uh, yep. that is everybody was surprised that this was not a copyright claim it is a patent claim um i'm sure most people know what i'm talking about but I'm oh not yeah don't even is. need to say the names that i'm pretty sure everybody <laughs> knows because it's yeah really so yep if if this developer had a decent errors and emissions slash professional liability policy they probably would assuming they got it from a decent place they probably would have been covered for a copyright claim against them okay but, but unless they took the extra step and got patent insurance in addition to this it, is where that... it depends if their broker knew what they were doing um if they don't have patent insurance they're paying that for themselves hmm. so yeah okay. so yeah top tip you know uh if you think you could be in breach of any patents uh that is a separate type of insurance and you might need to look into that separately okay. um, but anyway going back to my uh example um yes. so we had a publisher that approached us and they said that we really like the look of this game we think it's going to be super cool uh, we'd love to publish it, but we're concerned that uh, a very big and well-known entity may uh, sue the developer on copyright grounds because the IP is, dare I say, intentionally similar to this existing okay. IP. Yeah. Um, however, it has it, it has become into the public domain. So. Legally, everyone is saying it's okay, it's fine, it's public domain, and you can have something that's that's similar as long as it's not you yep. know, to be confused with something else. Um, and I'm sure lawyers can talk talk about that in much more length. Um, yeah, copyright law, super interesting. 
Um, but uh, the concern was that if they publish this game, this this big IP holder could come along and say, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna sue you on copyright grounds and effectively block the product." Now, right, even if they lost, it's still going to cost them a lot of time and effort and expense to defend that position. Yeah. So the publisher was like, "Okay, if you can get some insurance to cover you against this scenario." Uh, we're willing to go ahead with the deal and invest. What we don't want is a situation where we're investing money in publishing this game, and then we're all stuck dealing with this big entity and, and racking up tons and tons of legal costs. If we yeah. can pass that cost off to the insurer for the price of the insurance policy, then we've got a deal. So they, they talked to us. Um, what's really important is that we were transparent with the insurers and highlighted this issue to them and said, look, this is the concern. Mm -hmm. um, that is a key thing as well. You cannot and should not ever try and hide anything from the insurers. You've got to be super, super transparent and say, this is the reason we're looking for insurance. Yeah. This is exactly the situation that we're worried about. Can you confirm that you're aware and you're on board with covering that? Okay. You yeah. Do you not so want to just try and buy some sort of insurance because you're worried about something and then don't tell the insurer because if they found out later that you knew all along that this was a potential you knew it was issue, a risk then it's mm, uh yeah then yeah, you're in yeah. trouble you're they're not that's gonna not get covered gonna, that's not gonna go in your in your favor so no um and it also just gives everybody a ton of comfort because you know for our part we want to feel like the insurers on board with the risk they know what they're covering if yeah. this scenario happens well, you know we're gonna look pretty stupid if, if they try and make a claim and then the insurer's like no we're not gonna cover that yeah um, so yeah, uh, that's, I think, you know, integrity there is, is so important and be transparent. That's, that's one of my top tips. I'm going to be drilling at home throughout <laughs> all of these videos is be transparent, overshare your information, tell the insurers everything about what you're doing. This industry has a reputation of being very secretive. Um, mm. you know, NDAs are all over the place for everything. Yep. Nobody likes to know what they're doing. They're, they're scared that a competitor is going to steal their brilliant idea, which is very valid. Um, but yep. when it comes to ensuring those ideas, hiding stuff from the insurer is never a good, never a good plan. Um, so yeah, we we got them, we got them covered for that situation, and the deal was done, and the game is uh, out, or it's about to be launched, and it's been very well received. It was yeah, very, you know, widely publicised. Uh, it made a big splash at Gamescom. Uh, so yeah, very cool to to see that unfolding and, and know that we have a little part in that. So yes. yeah, it's great. So that's an example of insurance working really well, getting deals done.